So in the next two videos, I'm going to be showing you how I made this. And what this is, is a sensory box. Now these can be used for children of all ages, but they're becoming more um, helpful and useful with kids that have autism, mainly because um, children that have autism learn at a different pace and in different environments than, than children that do not. So by having a sensory box that kind of caters to, to um, their sensibilities in a sense, they can learn at their own pace without having to worry about um, getting overwhelmed or feeling anxious and more stereotypical learning environments. So I made this for someone and I actually kind of went back and forth on whether or not I was even going to film it. But I did just because whenever I don't film stuff, I wish I had. But I'm only posting this video. Um, this is actually getting mailed out today. I wouldn't be posting this video for a couple weeks, but I'm only going to post it if she tells me that her son finds it useful and enjoys it. Um, I am not a doctor and I know that there's lots of these floating around the internet and I don't want to put something out there that isn't going to be useful or helpful. This is kind of my own design. I designed it around what she told me he responds the best to, which is Velcro light switches, doorknobs, and lights in general. But I did do a, not an extensive amount, but an amount I felt comfortable with of research on autism. I obviously knew what autism was before. I know people that have it, but I didn't just want to throw something together and it, and it not be useful. So the entire thing is kind of the design of the whole piece is a little bizarre, but it focuses on shapes and textures. So on the side, everything is texturized because I know that's an important learning element. And the top, especially the design, is the Black Panther design because the little dude I'm making this for really likes superheroes. And then the main goal for this was I wanted each side of the box to be almost a complete system. I'm not knocking the ones I've seen before, but a lot of times it's a singular activity and I feel like that can get very repetitive and, and easy to move on from. So I would, for each one of these sides, I took one activity and kind of exploited what could be done with it in order for it to be more useful in a sense, I guess. The point of these boxes is to help def uh, refine your, your motor skills. So they're not super intense activities, but you can, you can play around with them. So obviously the lights, like I said, so this is just a light panel with switches. This is probably the most simplistic side. And then the doorknobs come into play here with, with hinges and each one has a different element so that you can kind of play around with how different elements open, open doors and whatnot. And then this side is the Velcro side. So all of these pieces are Velcroed in place, but the intention was that instead of just having a piece Velcroed to a strip, it was almost like Tetris where you could take them all off. You could build new shapes. You could build new designs because this is essentially a square. So you should be able to put these back on in multiple different patterns. And then the side with the gears, there's actually a lot more gears for this side, but I'm clear coating them and you could play around with, this is an asymmetrical grid. So you could play around with figuring out how to line these up to get to do what you want. And then the top is essentially a light box powered by some puck lights and it changes color. It looks really cool, especially at nighttime. And um, I also thought that this would be useful as a background lighting. So you could put a clear piece of plastic on this. They sell them like at Walmart. And with some markers, you could draw on top of this and make designs. So like I said, this is essentially the box. Um, the other reason I was Contemplating not posting this is the, the, the construction of it is not super intense, but it's probably a little more advanced than what most DIYers are capable of doing and or have the tool set for. So I didn't want to put an educational tool on my channel that no one can make. So unlike a lot of my other videos where I go in depth of the process that I use to make the box, I'm still going to do that, but I'm going to spend a lot of time telling people other ways that they can make this. For example, this entire top is, is lap jointed together and then the sides are, are put in there with rabbits and dados. A lot of people probably don't have the tools to make those joinery, that those joints, but I'm gonna tell you how you can do it with butt joints. It'll be just as good, um, especially for what this is. It's not um, a table or anything that's gonna have to hold up to a lot of stress. So those were my main concerns with posting this. Like I said, if, um, if I don't get 
if um and I'm only putting this up there if the person I'm giving it to tells me that it, it is useful for, for their for their son. So I'm starting off by ripping down some cherry scrap. Most of this box is made out of scrap. I'm using fairly thick lumber. This stuff is almost two inches thick just because I knew I was going to do a lot of carving into it. I wanted the entire box to have a texture. I know one of the important aspects of these, these boxes is to engage as many senses as possible. So as far as touch and uh, which engages, which is engaged through texture on, on this box, like I said, I, I decided to do a lot of, of detail carving on the outside of it, which is why these pieces are so thick. So right now I'm going through and adding a dado. I'm putting this on an angle so that the pieces um, are angled off of the box, once again with the intention of having a lot of surface area to carve. Um, like I said, this is one of the, the aspects of the box that's probably a little more in depth. Um, you need a table saw to make these cuts. Could probably make a jig for with a router, but that would that would be pretty time consuming. Um, but you can do this with just butt joints, and butt joints is just end grain to face grain, and and screwed together. A lot of DIYers have pocket hole screws. You can make a box like this with pocket hole screws. Um, if you don't have the capacity to make this sort of joinery. And then the, the joints were half inch, and then I'm just cutting down some half inch plywood to fit in there. This is, um, this, the sizing of this was pretty much based on what I had. So you could see how this plywood slides into those grooves and then my corners um, protrude out. So I have a lot of surface area to carve on this. You can see now that the box is starting to take shape. What I mean by the fact that you could just um, screw all these sides together instead of having these joints. And that is what everything looks like. So I went through a little bit of a process deciding how I wanted to do this. You could see I started by trimming down the inside of these. I thought I might just kind of pop something on top. And then I settled with adding walnut to the top. Once again, this is scrap. Once again, this is fairly thick. It's about an inch and a half. And I'm just adding a half inch groove on the bottom to match the top of the half inch groove on my box. You can see how those fit into place. And then once I have them lined in place, I can line up laps and make lap joints on the top. Once again, if this is makes no sense, um, and it doesn't look like something you have the capabilities to do, you could just place walnut on top of your box and, and screw it all together. Um, I don't dislike hardware, I just prefer joints for things, so if you wanted to just set these on top, even drilling through the whole piece and adding dowels would be super sturdy. But you could see I'm doing laps, so I removed half of the material on that one piece and I'll remove half of the material on the other side. And then with that dado groove on the bottom, this whole thing slides into place and is now very sturdy. And then I could just screw that together. I mean glue together. There's, there's not a lot of screws in this. So then, like I said, this is, this is just um, adding those, all those pieces. I didn't uh, glue the plywood together. I knew some of the patterning on the sides would be easier without the plywood in place. And I actually was able to remove some of it for, for making the sides. So that is why I'm just gluing this top portion. I was happy, especially uh, this, there was a, a knot in one of these pieces. So I, uh, you could see me gluing that back together. So then comes the roughing out. I'm rounding off the corners with a jigsaw and I do a lot of my rough carving, sometimes with chainsaws, but this is, this is a little too delicate for chainsaw work. And then um, I have an abrasive disc for an angle grinder that I should do a lot of my shaping with. So there's really no rhyme or reason to this pattern. I'm just kind of creating a, a soft curve on all of the pieces. You can see I have an angle grinder uh, a metal abrasive disc and the angle grinder. There's, I know some people, the angle grinder is can be a very dangerous tool, but it's a very versatile tool. So if you have one, these discs are not cheap, but they really remove material quite quickly. 
so you can see I'm just I'm just creating a curve with that and then I have a die grinder which I'll go through and and really amplify that curve now I use a couple different tools for carving um, I said this in my last video where I do carving as well if you do not have an angle grinder and a die grinder and a rotary tool like I do you can do all of this carving with just a regular Dremel and a multitude of bits I use all those tools because I have them. I like to use the thicker bits in the die grinder and the thinner bits in the rotary tool so I don't have to spend a lot of time changing out the collets on, on um, all of my tools. I could keep one collet in each one and then and then keep carving. But if you do not have this, this um, plethora of tools, like I said, I believe they're Dremels. You might be able to get collets for the bigger ones. Don't quote me on that. But you could definitely it will take longer but you can definitely do this sort of carving with smaller ones you can see i'm just using some circular bits to go through and create this wave pattern it's just it's just a pattern of positive and negative space so then i decided to go through and and very very simply texturize this so this is a circular bit i'm now using my rotary tool and i'm just punching that into all the pieces this is not a super expensive bit it's just a circular um, abrasive bit so you could see it's burning the lumber a little bit but I actually ended up liking the way that looked so I'm just going through in all of the negative spaces and adding adding those circles and I did that on all the cherry so for the top like I said this is the pattern that's on the Black Panther so what I like to do because I can't draw is I, I printed I blew this up on my computer and printed it out it's a very simple triangular pattern with some some stripes in there as well I'll tape this to the portion of the box I want it and then I'll transfer the pattern with a wood burning tool that's pretty much how I do any sort of initial carving if it's if it's a pattern or something that needs to be symmetrical that I can't draw this is how I do it so you can see I'm just transferring that pattern I get the basic bulk of it like I said it's pretty easy so I could guess some of it with with a pencil and as you get down the side the the wood burner will burn onto the piece so it kind of follows the contour the paper burns into the pattern you can see you're left F left with that pattern and like I said I'll go through with a pencil and just kind of go over it again to get my lines make sure they're accurate so for the carving on this I'm using a, a, a abrasive dovetail bit in my rotary tool I did most of the carving on this with that that's the finished pattern and I like the dovetail bit because it, it um, leaves a nice kind of chamfered shape to the piece that's what the bit looks like and I'm just gonna go through and follow my lines like I said this is a pretty simple carving it's a very low relief carving there's not a lot of detail to it and it's symmetrical so I'm just following all of my lines up I do all my vertical lines first as you can see here and then I'll switch to the other side so you create um, a mirror image and a symmetrical image on the other side but you could see from from right here if you have a Dremel and somewhat of a steady hand you could easily recreate this pattern I'll go through on one side and then go through on the other so it creates um, a, a V groove valley to create that pattern now I like I said I do most of this with the dovetail bit and then I have a fine finer bit it's a diamond bit that I'll go through and clean this up with I don't know if I film any of that but there is a little cleanup to do on, on the this patterning you can see now I'm, I'm doing the other side just to make that mark a little more prevalent so then for the top I'm putting a lid on this and the lid will kind of complete the basic construction of this so I'm putting a rabbiting bit in my router I'm creating a groove I feel like a lot of DIYers have routers so you you might have the tools for this if you do not you can um, just make a lid that sets on top of the box and screw it in place my lid eventually gets screwed in place as well so that that is an option you do not have to have this groove that it sets in and then obviously the router bit is circular so I'm just cleaning up those corners so I'm using a transparent plexi that I had laying around because I want the light to shine through it. I end up ordering a thinner piece of plexi than the one I had just so the light is diffused a little bit nicer 
so I'll tra change it out but just for the sake of this video the original lid had this this thicker plexi in it and that was kind of the size I had so I had some scrap walnut laying around I ripped it down into I believe it was an inch and a half strips and I'm just using a tenoning jig on my table saw in order to create a groove in the middle of these pieces. This tenoning jig is very easy to make, so if you have a table saw, I don't have a video showing how I make this, but there's plenty of videos on YouTube. It's basically just a plywood box that slides over your fence, and then you could see having it set, the blade set up a little off center, I could create two, two grooves the same distance from the edge, and then just remove the stock in the middle and have a nice groove. So then that is a bridle joint, and then this is making the mating piece to that. Once again, I just have the blade raised a little bit. I have the fence set off just enough to create the depth I need, and I'm just creating some kerf cuts and cutting this so it's the same thickness that will fit into that lid. This lid is another thing that, yes, I'm creating these, these bridle joints and, and strong joinery, but you can easily miter these corners and, and screw this together just like you would a picture frame, um, and it will, it will hold up for sure if you don't feel like making this joinery. So then I just have a plexi, plexiglass cutter, and I'm cutting this down to size. You just score it a bunch, and then it, then it snaps right off. And then I thought I filmed it, but I didn't. I cut a groove on the inside edge of this frame to fit that plexi in. Like I said, I end up, up cutting that, cutting this out in order to get that plexi out because I changed it out. A better way to do this is to put a rabbit on the back side of the piece so it is interchangeable and you could uh, switch it out if you need be, which I prefer better than this original version. I'll show you how I change it afterwards just in case something happens to it the customer in 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 this case um, the person i'm making this for wants to change it out or it breaks it's much easier to do but you can see how it slid in there i glue only put glue on the edges and then this is just about ready to go so the, th this whole lid fits inside the groove in that box and then what I do is I trim out the edge, and that's the lip that will sit on top. Oh, this is another thing I thought I filmed. I did not. It's just molding I had laying around my shop that I miter all the corners, just like a picture frame, and then put some brads into it around the whole piece. So that's what that looks like. And then this is... I'm not going to show cutting it out because no one should have to do that, but this is just what it looks like if you rabbit that inside edge, put some scrap in there to hold it in place, and that is the new Plexi.